Hi guys, this is Dan. In the last couple of reading vlogs, you may have already observed a recurring theme. I couldn't finish a book. And for that, I do apologize. So I had a thought, why not changing things up a little bit? This reading vlog won't end until I finish a book. It may just take a couple of minutes, which I highly doubt it, or even as long as a month. You have been asking for long form content, so here you go. The book I've chosen for this challenge is Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mohanty. It is a grimdark Indian myth inspired fantasy series. In this book, we're gonna follow several different perspectives, which can get a bit confusing at times. Maybe it is because I'm not too familiar with Indian myth, so it's taking a while for me to get into the world. So far, I am a third of the way through. The first chapter took place a thousand years ago, and then the plot would jump to a thousand years later. The story so far is about a republic, which was formed by overthrowing the empire's family. Now the empire wants to reclaim what was lost, but the republic was running low on resources and needed to figure a plan out. We also get to see another part of the world where a low-born character climbing up the social ladder with a noble act as his mentor. There are some complications along the way which involves an unexpected love affair. So far, this book reminds me of Against All Gods by Mars Cameron, where we follow a huge cast of characters who will eventually cross paths. This may not be my favorite kind of writing style because I tend to forget the earlier details by the time I reach the end. It is also a little bit hard for me to really connect to any of the characters. I've just finished a session so I'm about to start another region. The character list is pretty extensive so I hope I can keep track with everyone. I'm off to read a little bit more before dinner so I guess I will see you in the next update. So see ya! Hi guys, I'm here for a really quick update because compared to the beginning, I think I have just read maybe 30-40-ish pages more. So not too much, but progress has been made. I don't think I can give a little bit more about what this book is about because with this 40-ish pages, we have been introduced to two new POVs. One is like a school setting and the other one is like a torturer. The torture was really brutal, so be careful of it. Not too much in terms of the whole plot in general, because I guess we need to wait until the middle part when every character is gonna meet up together and see how they're gonna solve the problem. And of course, there are certain links connecting all these characters, all these POVs, so somehow they are related, but at this point, it is still a bit distant. Once again, before cooking dinner, I may read a little bit more. I hope that I can finish this section so I can reach what I would say is the middle chunk. So every character, every POV is gonna be together and see what the mess they're gonna create. I think I need to read another 80-ish pages to get to that point. Luckily, tomorrow I would have some more time for reading, so I hope that I can get to that point and share a little bit more about how I feel about this book. So now I have to finish editing that March wrap up video and hopefully I have some time to read before cooking. So we shall see. See you all in the next update. See ya. I have reached my goal to read 80 pages more and I am ready for the next stage. So I guess it is the time to give you an other update. You know, some events happen in a POV could really shake up the political scene of another region. And it is the same for the characters. Their names may be brought up in a conversation and then you will meet them later in the book. Now it seems that almost all these POVs are leading up to this powerful princess who are about to get married. Everyone is like sending important figures or their prince for this task. She is like a magic solution to the problems each state is grappling with. Money, allies, army, you name it, she got it. 
My issue with this book is actually quite consistent with my past experience. Like other epic fantasy series, I think most of the POV should be more evenly distributed across the book. I am halfway through the book, yet I barely seen anything about the three POVs that were introduced earlier in the book. Honestly, it is a bit tough to be emotionally invested in these characters because they don't appear that often. Also, there is a whole lot of details to keep in mind with. Sometimes when some characters bring out certain names, I may find myself pausing to remember who that is or who exactly that character is linked up with. I personally think this book is a bit ambitious, which is not a bad thing. You got this fantastic diverse cast of characters, which is great. Just a bit of advice here, I think the arrangement of the POVs might be a little bit tricky for readers to catch up with all the details. At this point, I am halfway through of the book, but starting from here, there is no separate chapters. There is only a huge chunk of paragraphs that are divided by their sigils. Oh my god, what have I got myself into? Wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. Tomorrow, an exciting news, I will be going to Cambridge for an overnight trip. So I will try to read as much as I can today because I don't see myself reading that much during the trip because it's holiday, it's Easter. So I will see you all in the next update. Probably I will be back from Cambridge. So see ya. What's up guys, just got back from Cambridge over Easter, so it has been a while since the last update. I would say that I had a decent time in Cambridge. It is kind of what you're gonna expect with all these colleges. They are all massive and the architecture of them is mind-blowing. You can literally pick up any of them when you walk around the city centre. I do wonder if I could study, not a little bit, but much harder. What would it feel like if I can study in Cambridge because the scenery there is quite beautiful? Most importantly, I resist the urge to buy any books at every bookshop. We got Cambridge Press, which is for academic books, and I guess it is also for uni publication. Of course, Waterstones and something that I can't find where I live, which is Blackwells. My wallet is safe for now.
And for dinner, I found this amazing steakhouse called the Flat Iron. Let's just say they cook it exactly how I would like it, practically mooing. Chef's kiss. Perfect. Then the next day, I did this amazing riverside walk, but skipped the boat tour. Honestly, those tiny boats felt a little bit cramped, especially with strangers close by. For future Cambridge trips or for those of you who would like to visit Cambridge one day, taking the train and arriving a little bit earlier, let's say 10 or 11ish, seems to be a smarter move. It will give you a little bit more time to explore the town before heading back to London. Walking to town, trying to visit as much as college as you can, visit all the bookshops of course, and also have a nice riverside walk. After that, why not have a drink and also a nice dinner? That would be great. I also learned the hard way that most of the hotels are actually outside the city center. Mine was right by the train station, so you can already imagine it is great for catching up trains, but not so convenient for sightseeing if you're like me, carrying a heavy bag with books in. I think each day at least I did 15,000 steps, which was a lot, especially for the first day. It was raining. It makes the whole experience more exhausting. Cambridge itself is definitely historical, but there were quite a lot of new development around the city centre. So it was quite an interesting walk from the train station to the town because in the beginning, you got all these new buildings, but as you go further into town, you will see all the historical colleges. We are here for the book, so I am happy to report that I have finished The Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mahanti. Overall, my feeling is the same. I am not hating it, but I am not loving it. In the second half of the book, you would find two major events. I found the first one a little bit more entertaining because finally all the POVs are coming together. There were so many manipulation, twists, and unexpected turns, so if you are into political mind games, you would definitely love this part. But after this event, it is like back to the first half of the book, which we got different POVs again. It is like the build up to the last event in this book, and we are only focusing on three POVs. At last, we will reach the climax, which is the conflict that has been hinting all along. I found that definitely epic and also really brutal and bloody and emotional. You will see how this major political conflict gonna be resolved and also how the prophecy gonna be fulfilled. The arrangement here is like the first event which we got this massive chapter but only divided according to the sigils. But I found the way it is presented is a little bit weird to me. We are literally jumping between tons of characters. Some of them we barely know, we barely met. So I found it a little bit detached from the main story. I found this arrangement is a little bit on the convenience side. Some of the POVs here are the general soldier in the front line. So you can easily get different perspectives, different sides of the battle. Some of the POVs we have been following are just vanished from this battle as well. I can feel the ambition of the author and also the clear inspiration of A Song of Ice and Fire. But I do think that it will be a little bit difficult for some people to get through the first 40%. There is no clear direction for some POVs or how these POVs are gonna come together in the end. If you count the main characters, we are gonna follow 7 POVs. And like I said in the last updates, we are gonna follow them in a pair. And then we will move to another region to follow another pair and then so on and forth. I find this arrangement makes it hard for me to be invested in any of the characters because I'm not sure when I'm gonna see you again. I feel like for one or two or even three POVs can be included in a separate novellas because they are not gonna directly involved in certain conflicts or certain events and they won't change the status quo drastically. So the pacing could be a little bit more upbeat and the readers, us, can learn, can understand, can root for these characters as well. Overall, it is a chunky debut with potential. Not sure if I will jump straight to the sequel, but I will definitely check the reviews first. So what do you guys think? Do you like this kind of reading vlog where I am able to finish a book rather than leaving some crumbs behind? Let me know in the comments. So if you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like. If you don't want to miss any content from me, make sure you have subscribed to my channel. I will see you real soon. Goodbye.